Hello and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows. And today we're looking at Museum Heist. Museum Heist from Fox Mind Games is a two to four player bluffing board game, but it's not like your normal, like, who's the bad guy type of board game. Yeah, it's a little more strategic with a little bit of a checkers feel. Uh, let's take a look at the game components and see how the game works. To set up the game, regardless of player count, all of the wooden character pieces are randomly placed out on the board in the museum, as well as one piece of artwork. Players are given a deck of identical character cards, and they each secretly select which player they want to be for the round. Then, players each take turns taking one action. They can move any character piece on the board one space, and it must always be in a direction that's nearer to the artwork. When players move, they can jump over other characters, like in checkers. They can also use the secret passages to move from one hatch to another hatch on the board, again, as long as it's closer to the artwork. Players are also given two swap tokens at the beginning of the game. So another action they can take is to swap the locations of any two characters on the board. If a player is able to get their colored character marker onto the artwork, they claim it as their own. But if when they claim it, another character reveals that they are also the same color, they actually get to steal it away. Whenever one piece of artwork is claimed from the board, the person to the right of the player gets to put a new piece out. Everyone selects a new character card, and the player to have claimed the last piece of artwork goes first. The goal of the game is to collect three or four pieces of artwork first, depending on the player numbers. And if you can do that, you win the game. So I don't know if you can tell from the description of the game that we just gave, but this game gets really thinky. Because every time that new uh, artwork piece comes out on the board, you get to pick a new character color, and everybody's picking separately. And so even though like blue might be closest to the newly placed treasure, you don't necessarily want to be blue, because if you end up jumping on it first and then somebody else reveals their card, then they're stealing the treasure away from you. You also don't want to be like, okay, so I want to be orange maybe, because he's further away, and then I'll move him in and get it, but I might help somebody else. What if somebody else is orange too? What if there's blue? Like, there's just tons of analysis for trying to figure out like what this person would do, and if you move them, sometimes you end up in a situation where there's like three markers that are all around the artwork, and you're like, okay, I think I'm ready to move the blue one onto it, because that's me, but as soon as I do, she's gonna claim it. Why did she move orange this time? If I don't do blue, then she might do orange next time, and she might win, ugh. The, the secret bluffing part of this is really, really fantastic. Um, keep talking, what else what do we need to cover? Uh, well, we didn't mention one of the other actions you can take is to call somebody out on which character they are. Yes. So if somebody is very obvious, you think, of which character they've been they've chosen, uh, you can call them out. If you're wrong, you are out for that round. But if you're correct, then the other player is out and gives you an advantage the rest of the game. Yeah, and that makes a huge difference in a two-player game. We've played this a couple different player counts, and it's a little bit different every time. One-on-one -on -one is very chess-like, like trying to anticipate, okay, would they pick this one because it's closest? Should I move on to it and then let them steal it from me? A lot of really thinkiness. When you play it with three or four players, then obviously there's like more random stuff going on. And when we played this as a family, actually our littlest player won the game because he would just choose the most obvious choice like I'm gonna be blue it's the closest then like I'd be like okay I'm gonna be blue and I'll let him move on it and then he wouldn't move on it and I'd be like maybe he's not blue and then I would jump on it and then he would be he blew my mind <laughs> a, a lot of really cool depth in this game really really enjoyable uh if it sounds interesting to you uh it's a small box game it's it's fun party easy to explain to people easy to take with you really affordable Tangent Mouse gives Museum Heist 2 thumbs up <laughs>